Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video, this is Back to Basics with Microsoft Flight Sim Part 49 Exam Time! Ding 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 my friends! I'm going to be giving you some instructions on a couple of legs of a flight, or two different flights essentially, using two different aircraft, the Cessna 172 here, but to begin with, the Cessna 152, if you're daring enough. Covering various different aspects and lessons that we've learnt so far in our Back to Basic series. It's now over to you. Like I said, I'll be giving you a couple of, a few instructions on what I would like you to do. So the requirements for the exam. And then I'll be asking you to do the exam and share your results and adventures with us. Don't worry, I'll explain more in the video. Exciting, hey? <laughs> so let's not dilly dally, let's get on with this video. Okay, ladies and gents, settle down, quiet down, please. The exam is in progress. Now, we're going to set off from Leeds Bradford Airport. So that's Echo Golf November Mike. E-G-N-M. Echo Golf November Mike. Runway 14. I've got the Orbix. No, it's not the Orbix version. I've got Leeds Bradford version 2. I think it was marketed by Orbix anyway. And I'll link the video I did of this airport, why not, down below. It's a lovely looking airport. But runway 14. What's important here is the choice of aircraft. I'm going back to the basics with this one. The humble Cessna 152 with the classic dials. Just press your B key to make sure your altimeter correct. It is there. So that's what roughly 700 feet above sea level here at Leeds Bradford. Important. We're going to go back to episode one of our Back to Basics series, trimming tips. So what I want to do is here is take off and then climb to 2,500 feet. I'm going to go through this part with you. It's pretty straightforward. The rest of it, I well, I'm going to leave to you. You'll see in a moment. So I'll start you off nice and easy. Full throttle. Get up to just over, what, 55 to 60 knots? I don't have any flaps in, so maybe 60 knots will do here. Oh no, actually 55 is fine. It's very easy with the Cessna 152. <coughs> and I'm going to climb. I'm going to try and maintain 80 to 90 knots in the climb. Keeping the runway heading. So our current heading. So whatever weather you have. I've got live weather selected here, but it's okay at the moment. So one thousand. Change the weather to your own preferences. If you can't see what's going on, you need to somewhat with this first part of the exam. So there you go. 90 knots in the climb. Maintaining the runway heading. And we'll climb up to 2,500 feet. Now I'll keep my throttle pretty much full while I'm in the climb now. Let's just put my nose down so I get back to that 90 knots. Knots over here, so between the 80 and 100 mark there on the dials. And I mean, even 80 is fine in the Cessna 152 if you want to get there a bit quicker. So we can do... And there we go, I'm just doing this all by hand, people. Maintaining the runway heading, roughly. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Just watch. You do get blown around a bit and there's a bit of torque in goodness knows what. So just be aware of that. So there we go. Just maintaining roughly that 90, 80, 90 knots in the climb. Choose one. 80 or 90. I'm choosing now 80 knots just to get us there a little bit quicker. And I'm just position of my yoke, light, light pressure on my yoke or flight stick or whatever you'll be using for this. 
It's a Yelk aircraft, so Yelk goes well with it. And there we go, we're getting up to the climb. We're getting up to our 2,500 feet, rather. And once I get to 2,000... Um, 2,250 feet, I'll relieve that sort of back pressure. I've not got actually any pressure and I'm just lightly touching the yoke. Come off my runway heading slightly there. Not too bad actually. Not too bad. I'm still sort of maintaining it, which is absolutely fine. If you get this perfect, full marks to you. Do be brave. Go for what the 152. Even if you don't know it, it's good to know these classic dials. Sort of origin of Origin of flight, not quite, but nearly there. Okay, let's relieve that pressure. I'm just going to pull my throttle back a little bit too. And I'm getting there now. So I'm going to put in a little bit of trim, nose down trim. So I'm not climbing. Let go of my yoke, any pressure on the yoke. And trim down. Now don't chase it. Let it settle the trim wheel. I want this to get this on zero. Remember, go and look at video one, which I've linked down below. Any lessons I'm talking about, I'm linking videos down below in the description to, so you can go and familiarise yourself. Just trimming down, not chasing it. I can see now it's going to go below the zero. That's level flight. Straight on level flight because my wings are level. Straight and... I'm leveling off in my altitude here. So I'm just, with a mixture of throttle, tiny adjustments, and trim nose down or up, depending where your vertical speed indicator is. I'm going a bit more down there. We can level off. Now, to the next part of the lesson. Let's just level off completely there. Next part of the lesson, we're going to do VOR flying in the Cessna 152. I'll guide you through the first one again. I'll link the video I did of this down below. Classic VOR to VOR flying. We are going to make our way. Let me just talk you through this. Over. Bring up the VFR map. I'm using Flow to do this. It'll be in your top toolbar as well. We're going to make our way over to Birmingham Airport. So we're taking off from Leeds Bradford. And I want you. Look at the map here. They're on the VO, VFR map. Look at the map here, you've got various VOR signals around here. I want to guide us all the way down to Birmingham here. Choose the best path. Full marks to the person who chooses a path here on the VORs. Give you a clue, the first one's pull. So it's 112100. In your radio panels, I've got a radio panel, actually physical radio panel, but in your NAV1, essentially. So nav one over here, one one two on your standby. Decimal one hundred. Decimal one zero. Make it active. You see now these needles have deflected. Now I can get rid of that. Just make sure I'm in level flight still. It's roughly there, it's okay, I'm not too worried about that. On your VOR dial here, you want to turn this OBS. So that says two. I'm going from the VOR there in that configuration. I'm turning the dial. I'm going to link the video I did down below, like I said, to refresh. I'll go into more detail there, but I'm turning this CDI, I'm mousing down on it, so that needle comes into the middle, the course deviation needle comes into the middle, and it will give me a direction I need to fly to, to head straight towards that VOR, which is roughly a westerly heading. So if I come here, if I turn, get my view up here, turn to the west there I should be heading and while I'm doing this I'm watching my altitude stick to roughly keep your VOR, VFR map open now at this point throughout this flight if you want to and head towards Birmingham using VORs in the best profile it allows with the way the VORs are displayed on the uh, VFR map there if this is confusing you people I've covered this in previous videos if you're not au fait with your VOR flying Maybe now is the time, especially with Flight Sim 2024 around the corner. Might be time to brush up. You can see my aircraft turning towards that pole VOR now. Now, adjust your OBS needle there. Setting there. So it's saying pretty much roughly a westerly heading now. Oh, I'm coming below my 2,500 feet. So let's just level out on that westerly heading. 
Maybe a bit more there, so the needle's saying... Yes, pretty much directly there. And you can see there, I'm heading towards pole on the VR, VFR map. So that's all correct. I'll get myself back to 2,500 feet. Leave it there, people. That's all the guidance I'm giving you. C choose the correct VOR to VOR profile to get down to Birmingham Airport. EGBB, which is... Here. I'm mousing over various points there. And then... Well, once we get closer to Birmingham Airport, I'll bring you back for our next part of the exam. Okay, now for the next part of the challenge on the first phase of this flight. I'm coming towards Birmingham Airport, our destination. And what I want you to do here is do a visual landing. I'll link the appropriate video once again down below in the description if you're not sure. Now you can either put it if you're having trouble seeing Birmingham. I always have trouble seeing Birmingham Airport for some reason in the sim. I've only got the default version. As you can see, I'm just under... Just let go of the pressure of my yoke. I had it forward a little bit there. Just under my 2,500 feet. Let's make sure my altimeter is correct. It wasn't so 2,000... Almost 2,500 feet there, as you can see, which is great. So I'm roughly there with my altitude. Yeah, I don't know. For some reason, I always... You can have it either have this on clear skies. I've got it on few clouds at the moment, the preset. Whichever is easier for you. And have your VFR map open. Or some kind of Garmin system just to show you. Some sort of map in the system to show you where you are in relation to the airport. It's over here, isn't it? Isn't it? I always have trouble with this one. But come down and do a visual landing. Like I said, I've covered this in a previous video. There it is, isn't it? And what you want to do is line up and try and get the puppy lights. Get down to speed. I'm going to start slowing down now, in fact. So I'm pulling my throttle back. I have covered this before. But I'll go through this with you again. It will already start to descend because I pulled my throttle back. That's fine. But I'm trying to get my speed now down to flaps range. Always, always have difficulty spotting this one. So you may have the same difficulties. <laughs> you may not. Could just be the old Hodgson. It's getting very blind. It's right there, isn't it? There's the airport. So get the VFR map off now. Yeah, that one tr is tricky for me to spot for some reason. So I'm going to line up. I, I can see I need to come to my right slightly. There's the threshold of the runway. I'm just going to look at my speed. Just bring up that, that throttle back again just so I can get towards flaps range. keep her internal for this one there we go almost lined up with the runway now I'm getting some way towards my flaps range in the Cessna 152 there anywhere near that let's just bring that throttle back slightly try and keep level flight so just pull me yoke backwards back a bit just there we go let's go into stage one flaps now That's going to slow me down a little bit more and configure me nicely. I just need to line up with this runway. Yeah, what, we, what I want you to do, people, do a visual landing here. Full points for anybody who's done this in the Cessna 152. It took me probably around about an hour to get here. Following the various different VORs along the way. I'm not going to give you the full track of what I did, but try and imagine you're lining up using VORs with Birmingham. And it did me well. There we go, there's the airport. Oh, so there's a the runway right there. Still not fully lined up. Speed's good. Once I feel I'm lined up properly, I'll go to... Well, I can go to... Next stage of flaps now. So stage two flaps. Slow down even more. Just going to be aware of stall speed now. But I'm not going to get there. You know, 60 is okay actually coming in. 55, 60. 
let's say 60 in the Cessna 152 to give you that safe approach speed. I can see the puppy lights. I'm high. That's absolutely fine by me. What I'll, oops, what I'll do is reduce my throttle. I keep hold of this speed. Let's just pull my view out of it. There you go. Reduce my speed. It's going to help me to slow down. Full flaps. Just going to compensate for that flare. And it should still start to descend. Better high than low. So I've not got a good puppy right puppy light reading here. I'm a little bit too high. But I'm not too worried because I can see the runway. I'm only in a, in a little Cessna 152. You can see my speed here. It's absolutely fine on approach. Get that a little bit slower. There we go. That'll help me to bring the nose of the aircraft down. Let's try and get... There you go. Three white, one red, three right, white at the moment. There we go. Two white, two red. Perfect reading on the puppy lights there. Just follow that in now. So I'm following that glide slope a little bit low now. So I can release that pressure on my yoke a little bit. I can even introduce a little bit more speed there, just so it doesn't keep descending. Now I'm low. So I've introduced some throttle. Rather not speed, throttle. Well, it is speed, isn't it? <laughs> It's going to bring those puppy lights back into play. How's it doing? It's still showing all red at the moment. Not great. There you go. White's coming back in. Obviously takes a bit of practice there, but as long as you can see the runway now, and you can see where you want to land, that's what I'm concentrating on. I'm going to land maybe around here. I'm aiming to. my view all the way back out now. Don't worry about the puppy lights now. I've got the runway right in sight. Let's bring that throttle back. And just control this landing. Runway 19. 19er. There we go. Just flare a little bit. Oh, I touched down. Yep. <laughs> And then just pull off the runway. You can either go and taxi up at a stand. I'm just going to pull off because we are going to change aircraft now for the next challenge of our exam. So well done. Follow the, pop, uh, the VORs from uh, Leeds Bradford Airport all the way down to Birmingham. Line up and do a visual landing on runway 19 at Birmingham Airport, EGBB. Okay, let's go on to the next part of, of our exam. And okay, for the next part of the exam, you want to get to the world map. And this time we are going to put in a route. We're going to put in a route from the airport we landed at, Birmingham. And it was runway 15. <laughs> My eyesight, eh? <laughs> Setters departure. Runway 15, Birmingham. And Setters arrival, we're going over to Heathrow Airport. Set as arrival. And we're going to put a waypoint in between Blenhelm Palace here. So just add that. Left click and add. And there we go. Cessna 1. Oh, by the way, we're flying now the Cessna 172 with the G1000. That's important. So we've left the 152 behind. We're going to do something new with the 172 here. Uh, not new per se, we've done it in our previous lessons, but new to this video. Okay, 172 selected, Birmingham to Heathrow, with Blenhelm Palace as a waypoint added in between. Let's go fly. Right, so we're set up at Birmingham Airport EGBB. It is runway 15, what not 19. <laughs> Excuse my poor eyesight. So 15 Birmingham Airport in our Cessna 172. What I'm going to do, people, is link a video of my most recent video about vertical navigation using the G1000s that are currently in the sim. So this up-to-date version of the G1000 that we currently have, and this is default in the Cessna 172, I'll link my most recent video about vertical navigation. If you've not seen that, you're going to need it for this part. Go and watch that first. Because I'm not going to show you what to do. I want you to come up with the answer here. This is part of the exam. What we're going to do. We've got our course settings. So you'll take off. 
and you use nav mode to follow the course pretty easy and set an, an altitude which i'll talk about in a moment but before you do that on your right g1000 go and watch the video i've linked first if you're not sure press your procedure button on the right g1000 and select approach press enter there zoom in a bit what i want you to do i want you to select an appropriate vertical navigation so the vnav approaches are all here there's only four of them here remember our route we're coming in can i clear that let's clear that there there we go we're coming in from the to, to heathrow from the east so we're coming in from the west in fact but we're heading towards Heathrow in an eastward direction keep that in mind so we're coming towards Heathrow in an, in an easterly direction so procedures enter there select approach go and watch the video if you're not sure what I'm doing here select an appropriate coming in eastward VNAV profile that should give you a clue select an appropriate transition for that as well ignore what's there that's not the one i want you to follow but select an appropriate transition for that and when you've finished when you've set them up don't forget to load it not activate it if you activate this it will get rid of your flight plan and simply activate that approach we don't want that we want to load it into the flight plan i'm not going to load it in there because well I've not set one up, so there's nothing to load in. Our flight plan's still there the way it was. But load in that approach, once again, but I've, I've covered this in the video that I'm linking down below. Select approach, select an appropriate VNAV heading eastward towards Heathrow. Appropriate transition and load it in. And what you want to do, let me just show you something. Let's come back outside. Just show you a pitch on screen. This is not the approach profile. I'm just showing you this as an example. Your points along that approach, all your different altitude vectors, should all be in teal. So go and watch the video that I've linked to if you want to know how to do that. They should all be in teal before you... So that when you do select... Let's just clear that so it's not confusing people. When you do select VNAV along your flight, it will follow those VNAV, that VNAV profile down towards your final fix for Heathrow Airport. If that's puzzling you, like I said, this is an exam, so go and look at that previous video and it should make sense. To give you a clue, there should only be a few different vectors coming in towards Heathrow uh, in an eastwardly direction. So you only need a few different altitudes in teal. And to give you a clue, your initial altitude should be 3,500. You can set that higher if you want, but 3,500 for your initial altitude. And then you can follow the VNAV profile down to your final approach fix, which, if you've done it correctly, it will show. It's pretty much always the same towards Heathrow anyway, but it will show on your, on your approach that you set up. This is too advanced. Do go and watch that video that I've linked down below. You're following the same principles. We're just setting up now a different approach coming eastward. I won't give you too many clues there. Towards Heathrow Airport. And make sure that all your approach fixes are all in teal. Okay, people, good luck with that one. I'm not going to do it because it will spoil what I want you to do. Now... What, I've, what, what I would like you to do is share those. Share your adventures. Give it a try, both parts of this flight. You can try one or the other. In fact, if you're not confident in doing two, the, the both, just do one of them. Let us know down below. You can link the video or, or let us know that you got a video up. Come into our Discord. You can link it in. Share your amazing flight screen pictures. Label it. You know, this back to basics exam. Or, you know, if you've got a video to share, we've got a members section on our Discord as well where you can share it, members videos, sharing your members videos. Share it either way, or share it down below in the comments, and let us know how you get on. If it's popular enough, I'll be sharing those videos and comments in an upcoming, and pictures in an upcoming video. So, best of luck. I 
help somebody gets a hundred marks. It's just a bit of fun, people. It's just to test your knowledge of what we've learnt so far. So good luck. Let me know your thoughts. Give this video a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. I do plenty of these videos and I'll be doing more when Flight Sim 2024 releases. And I'll see you soon.